It's 5.30. I'll call the meeting to order. And if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone tonight and remind you if you wish to address the commission, there's a, a form at the sign in table that you need to fill out and, and get it to the clerk as soon as possible. And uh, there are um, also a list of a copy of the ordinance relating to addressing the commission. Remind everyone when you do come to the podium, if you would state your name for the record. Um, with that, I'd like to review the agenda and see if we have any modifications or additions to the agenda. None for me, Mr. Mayor. Lewis? Uh, none for me. Um, I've got two items. One, uh, an executive session we'd like to add to the agenda uh, regarding attorney-client privilege. Um, and shall we do that? What, after public concerns? Sounds, sounds good to okay? me. Yep, that sounds great. Okay with you. It'd be fine with me. <clears throat> and also, I'd like to remove item H from the consent agenda and have it move to items for commission action. If there's no other modifications, I'll entertain an order to adopt the agenda as I'm modified. A, yeah, I move we adopt the consent agenda items A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and I. And the remainder of the agenda too? Oh, sorry. The yes. whole agenda. Okay. okay. Then I take it back. I move we approve the uh, agenda. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Item three, appointments. The Housing Authority, uh, we have two terms that expired April 11th, 2018. One was eligible for reappointment. Um, and we also have uh, an outgoing Craig Scherholz that served two terms, so we'd like to thank Craig for his service to the Housing Authority. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, reappoint Kelly Tushman. So do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, we had, let's see, three applicants. Uh, Philip Chappé, Nicholas Reisner, and Eddie Rogers. I'd like to appoint Eddie Rogers to the Housing Authority. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Library Board, we also have two terms that uh, expire May 1st, 2018. One eligible for reappointment. Um, we have Patsy Tyndall that has served two terms as the outgoing board member. Again, we'd like to thank her for her service to the library. Um, so I'd like to uh, reappoint Jana Shaver. So can I have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. We had, um, let's see. Two applicants for the open position on the library board, Anita Chappé and Michelle Anderson. And I'd like to appoint Michelle Anderson to the library board. I'll second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is adoption of the consent agenda. So do I have a motion? I'll say it again. 
I move we adopt the consent agenda items A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and I. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Next on the agenda is presentations. Uh, presentation of Meritus Conduct Awards to Independence Police Department employees Hillary Cook and Ty Lupartis. Lupartis. Chief Harrison. Officer Cook and Lepartis, have you come forward, please? So it's a pretty exciting night here at the Commission for the Police Department. I have a couple of pretty, of uh, really positive things to talk about. But the first one here is um, Officer Lupartis here and Officer Cook. Uh, on April 7th, we're dispatched to the 700 block of South 4th Street to a report of trespassers in an attic. Upon arrival, they recognized the reporting party was under the influence of a controlled substance. The man invited officers into the home where they viewed contraband in plain view. As the officers attempted to make an arrest, uh, the man had a, unbeknownst to the officers, uh, the man was able to get a hold of a knife, slashed at the officers, uh, cut Officer Lupartis' hand. Um, the officers followed their training and tactics and um, they were able to take that man into custody uh, with, most importantly, no police officers getting hurt. But also, uh, the man that attacked the officer was uh, taken into custody in a very professional manner. And so I just want to present them with meritorious commendations for your courage that night and your professionalism in the way that you handled that. And, uh, their safety is extremely important to me, and uh, that, that was a very important a very close call and uh, I'm very glad that neither one of you got hurt and um, that I thank you for your conduct and have tremendous respect for the way you conducted yourselves that morning so th congratulations to you guys I almost forgot to mention, I think it's extremely remarkable and it, it goes to uh, it goes to Officer Lupartis' skills, but uh, Officer Cook was under FTO, a field training officer at that time, and uh, she just graduated from the academy on March 30th, if you remembered, we just introduced her. So she was in a very, very dangerous situation right out of academy and she did exactly what she needed to do. So that speaks highly of our academy training and of our field training officer's skills. So. Excellent work, both of you. And situations change so quick, and that's uh, something we don't always realize, how everything can here one way and then a second later have total different situation and um, Hillary was just sworn in was it two weeks ago or was it yes mayor I believe she was sworn in at the last commission meeting yeah wow. what a well, welcome to independence yeah <laughs> just going from school to active experience and we're we're glad that both of you are, are safe and also the, the individual that you had to apprehend. Things could have gone wrong real quick for all three of you. And we're really proud that you were able to do your job and remain safe and also preserve the life of another individual. So the next item on the agenda is uh, swearing in of a new police officer, Ike Dye. Ike, if you'll come forward, please. This is Joseph Ike Dye. I don't even know if you're allowed to call him Joseph. Uh, <laughs> he's a father of three, grandfather of two, and a husband of 21 years. He was born and raised here in Independence. He lived in Arkansas briefly. Uh, he's been in law enforcement since 2009. He worked the street with the uh, Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, worked his way up to, he was a canine handler, detective sergeant, and finished as a lieutenant overseeing the Montgomery County Department of Corrections. Um, 
He brings a lot of experience dealing with burglaries, homicides, and persons crimes. He served for the state uh, working for the Department of uh, Family Services uh, Children's Division. He was also he was an investigator with them investigating crimes against children. He started with us as a part-time officer back during Neowalla, and it'd be interesting to note that uh, Ike, on his first day as a part-time officer with Independence on the parade, on the day of the Grand Parade, served as negotiator to an armed and barricaded subject. So, uh, again, um, wow. you know, well, welcome to Independence. <laughs> but um, wow. I'm really excited to have Ike on. He's a very experienced officer. Uh, I've known his reputation. I've been acquainted with him since I started here. And... Uh, I think he's he's going to be a great hand for us, and we're extremely fortunate to have him, as well as officers like Lou Pardis and uh, Cook. So we got a lot of great people, and I couldn't be more proud of the people I served with. So, Mike, if you swear. Sure. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Kansas. The Constitution of the State of Kansas. And faithfully discharge the duties of police officer. Faithfully discharge the duties of a police officer for the City of Independence, Kansas. For the City of Independence, Kansas. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, the next uh, items for commission action, uh, we'll start with item H, consider scheduling a public hearing for June 28, 2018 at 5.30 p.m. to consider a garage stu structure located at 301 South 4th is dangerous and unsafe. Well, obviously <laughs> it's on the ground. I yeah. think we can say uh, we have a problem here. So we're just working with the homeowner through the usual process to try to get that debris out of there and cleaned up. So we're going through the process. This is kind of one, is it an environmental? Or, you know, when it's already down. We're, we're yeah, kind of working to, a, to get it cleaned up. So, yeah, so yeah. I, I imagine we'll, this will be resolved before and cleaned up before June 28th. Yeah. So we're just trying to, to go through the normal process. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? No. No. Okay, then do I have a motion to establish public hearing? I make a motion to establish a public hearing for. Okay, where is it? Okay. Okay. I move to set the date of June 28, 2018, for a public hearing to consider condemnation of the structures located at 301 South 4th as dangerous and unsafe. I'll second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Uh, consider proclaiming May 6th through the 12th, 2018, as public service recognition week does anyone want to explain public service recognition week or um, this is a, kind of a national thing too and we did this last year as well okay. it's an annual uh, recognition for you know not just city employees but employees of all all walks that are of uh, public servants they get a free month of utilities well if you would like to approve that that's up to you <laughs> <laughs> okay
Okay, do I have a motion to declare the proclamation? Sure, I move that we declare May 6th through 12th, 2018 as Public Service Recognition Week. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Oh, I guess I need to vote. Aye. Uh, Public Service Recognition Week in honor of the millions of public employees at the federal, state, county, and city levels, whereas Americans are serving every single day by public servants at the federal, state, county, and city levels. These unsung heroes do the work that keeps our nation working, whereas public employees take not only jobs but oaths, whereas many public servants, including military personnel, police officers, firefighters, EMT, paramedics, health care professionals, and others, risk their life each day in service to the people of the City of Independence, Montgomery County, State of Kansas, the United States, and around the world. Whereas public servants include teachers, doctors, and scientists, ride operators, and ticket sellers, nurses, building and safety inspectors, computer technicians, housing and social workers, cemetery, park, and zoo workers, public works and utility workers, dispatchers, court, clerical workers, and countless other occupations. Day in and day out, they provide the diverse services demanded by the citizens of independence of their government with efficiency and integrity. And whereas, without these public servants at every level, continuity would be impossible in a democracy that regularly changes its leaders and elected officials. Therefore, I, Leonard Kaflish, Mayor of Independence, Kansas, do hereby announce and proclaim to all citizens and set seal hereto that May 6th through the 12th, 2018, is Public Service Recognition Week in Independence, Kansas. All citizens are encouraged to recognize the accomplishments and contributions of government employees at all levels serving the citizens of Independence, Kansas, federal, state, county, and city. The next item is to consider proclaiming May 20th through the 26th, 2016 as Emergency Medical Service Week. So we did it last year. Uh, well, Sean provided this. So. There, Sean. Uh, this is just a week that they have every year to recognize the professionals that work in emergency medical services, which includes EMS and emergency room personnel. So this year we're going to be doing May 20th at the park. Us, along with Labette, are hosting a kids' day. We'll have fire trucks, helicopter landing, rural fire will be doing extrication, highway patrol, all law enforcement will be there. We'll serve hot dogs. So. We're just going to have a, a day for kids where they can come out and look at all the cool stuff. And weren't we, didn't we approve blocking part of the oval for that in the consent agenda? Okay, great. So this will be on Saturday the... It, it's, it's on a Sunday. I Sunday, think. okay. Well, do I have a motion? I make a motion to authorize May 20th through the 26th as EMS Week in Independence in recognition of the commitment to excellence the members of the Independence Fire EMS Department demonstrate every day. I'll second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. EMS Week Proclamation to designate the week of May 20 through 26, 2018 as Emergency Medical Service Week, whereas Emergency Medical Service is a vital public service, and whereas the members of Emergency Medical Service teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness and injury, and whereas emergency medical service has grown to fill a gap by providing important out-of-hospital care, including 
preventative medicine, follow-up care, and access to telemedicine, and whereas emergency medical service system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, firefighters, police officers, educators, administrators, pre-hospital nurses, emergency nurses, emergency physicians, trained members of the public, and other out-of-hospital medical providers, and whereas the members of emergency medical services teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills, and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical service providers by designating Emergency Medical Service Week. Now, therefore, I, Leonard Kaflish, Mayor, City of Independence, Kansas, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 20 through 26, 2018 as Emergency Medical Service Week with the theme, EMS Strong, Stronger Together. I encourage the com community to observe this week with uh, appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank Look you. forward to it. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is consider a request from our turn to approve the artwork for North Penn Railroad Trestle. Hello, I'm Amy Taylor and Shelby Demo and I are here uh, this evening on behalf of the Artern Group. Um, a couple of years ago we started a, a project to improve the overpass that's over North Penn, just uh, north of downtown. And several months ago, you might remember, we came and we asked permission to start that project and we did receive that approval. We promised we would come back and uh, get your final blessing on the artwork that will be appearing on the north and south sides of the overpass. So the top picture you will see, that will be on the north uh, side of the overpass, uh, promoting independence and all its attractions. The park and zoo uh, graphic will be uh, on the uh, south side of the overpass, promoting the park and zoo. So we would just like your blessing and your approval on this artwork. Um, it's, it has been approved by uh, Four Paws Board, uh, the Tourism Committee, and we're just waiting for a couple more responses uh, from the park board. Okay. Uh, who is going to have ownership of the signs and the responsibility for maintenance and replacement? That, that would be the R-Turn group. Okay. And they are making plans to have funds available to maintain those signs. Okay. I think we had approved closing Penn Avenue for the, the painting of the bridge in preparation for that. So. Commissioners, what do you have any questions about the artwork? Any opinions? Looks fabulous. Yeah, Can't I wait. Like it. Looks nice. How soon can we start? Uh, they're expecting hopefully sometime in May or June to have it completed. Great. <clears throat> Fantastic. Are both of the banners ready to be fabricated or is the funds still being raised? Um, I think we're ready to move forward with the Good. with the production of the banners. Good. Okay, if there's other questions, thank you for presenting these. I'll entertain a motion then. I make a motion that we consider a request from our turn to approve the artwork for the North Penn Railroad Trestle. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks thank so you, much. Commissioners. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Can't wait. Yeah, it looks good. <clears throat> Next item, consider a request from Eclectic Art Gallery to paint the traffic control boxes at Penn and Laurel. Hello, I'm Tamisha Sewell. I'm the assistant director at Eclectic's Art Gallery and the owner of the Treehouse of Early Learning Daycare here in town. And um, we would like for uh, Love Independence Day to um, paint the um, traffic control box that is pictured here. Um, a lot of other cities, larger towns, have the electrical boxes and things like that painted to kind of bring, here's some examples, um, to kind of bring some art into the city and kind of brighten up the, the plain old boxes and make them more interesting. Um, I actually brought a little mock-up if you guys want to have 
Yeah. And that's just a, that one's yeah. just colored pencil, so I mean the colors are going to look a lot better. It's inspired by Van Gogh's mm -hmm. sunflowers because mm -hmm. I wanted to mix our love of art and Van, we're really at the gallery. I think almost everyone's favorite artist is Van Gogh right now. But <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to mix that with something that said Kansas to me, and I really felt like that would be something bright and colorful um, to bring it in. And then on the top, I wanted to put the... Um, Indy with love in it, like on the Love Independence Day t-shirts to kind of bring it all together. This and is the corner right in front of Sears, right? Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's Penn and Laurel there. And what I would like to do if possible is since it's for Love Independence Day, I would like to be able to start Friday evening and finish it Saturday morning. You know, my only concern is it's aluminum and doesn't require maintenance now. <laughs> that is true, but I would, and myself and the others at the gallery did have plans to, you know, maintain it if there yeah. were any issues. We would use, you know, uh, outdoor type paints yeah. so that we wouldn't have any problems with flaking and a metal primer to keep everything yeah. on there and not flaky or crackly. I like the idea of adding the color uh, to the downtown, the mm -hmm. art, but uh, I guess I'm too much of a realist to see something <laughs> that uh, up that high and has no maintenance mm -hmm. to initiate a maintenance program on it. Uh, I, I wish you know you could do planters or something down low mm -hmm. that would improve the, the streetscape with the art, like the mm -hmm. ones in the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, they were all ground mounted. Yeah, I wasn't able boxes. to find any of those kind of in the downtown no. area. Those were the only boxes that no. were available. I, I like the idea. I just hate. I know what looking down the road is to add more uh, maintenance <clears throat> to our our staff to come back. And, mm -hmm. and once it's painted and then it, the groups change and who's going to maintain it then or who's going to have to paint it all one color where mm -hmm. right now it, it doesn't cost anything sure i understand that definitely paint. and that's kind of why we had planned as a gallery yeah. to kind of take over that just you know in the case that if one of it, myself or somebody else who was participating mm -hmm. had to go elsewhere mm -hmm. so. well, that that was my concern i don't know commissioners and we wouldn't need to cover the vents at all. I noticed that right. was a note in there. That's not an issue. I, I have uh, mixed feelings also. I, I love everything we do downtown that makes it un unique and stand out from other downtowns. I've, I've liked the murals we've done. Um, but I, I just have some misgivings about this not looking good in a year, having graffiti on it or uh, I don't know. It's, uh, sure. I can't say that I, I love the idea. And some other towns that have done these on electrical boxes and things have found that it brings down the amount of graffiti that they have a problem with. I mean, I know we don't have a huge problem with it necessarily in the downtown area, but taggers tend to not tag over somebody else's art. That's not to say it won't happen. I'm just saying it's one less place that they're as likely to do that. Yeah. Yeah, the concerns that's already been mentioned was the maintaining of it, mm -hmm. you know, if something changes and and you're not a part of this community anymore, mm -hmm. then then who picks up who picks up that responsibility? I mean, it's always nice to have an organization or someone that's that's mm -hmm. here that's been here that will continue uh, that process. So mm -hmm. we can all we can always look and say, well, they've been established here, uh, you know, they have members, you know, they will maintain that. Make sure it mm -hmm. looks nice, that it's touched up if it's needed. I mean, I, I like the, the concept itself, but mm -hmm. but there again, it, it falls who, whose sure. final responsibility Our is it yeah. when it doesn't. Designates Main Street, not the Eclectic Art Gallery, but designates Main Street in the future if there is an issue. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And the Main Street organization. Is Main Street okay with that? <laughs> yeah. You're being designated to maintain it once it's painted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, I talk 
to my design committee today, sorry, and we were okay with it as long as they were planning on maintaining it and if the design was brought to us beforehand, because we do, our concern is preserving the historical downtown and we didn't want something that looked like graffiti up there. And so we've, um, Tom Posh heads our <coughs> design committee and that was our big concern was that the designs come before us and Mr. Whitehead before any were put up there and then what was the follow-up plan for because we certainly don't have the artist on board to maintain this so that was, that was our question well thanks can we you know I like the concept of bringing color and life to the downtown can we look at another way or another place trash receptacles planter boxes you know some other means other than 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 those um, I would definitely be interested in that I'm not sure what else there would be available downtown I kind of gone through the area um, and the trash can I know that our receptacles have the, the texture on them and so I mean that's not a kind of thing that would work would we be. don't have um, planters at the gallery yeah. is my concern um, as far as that goes, I know that when we discussed it our, our, um, at the gallery meeting, uh, we had talked about if this one worked out, you know, adding one for a different theme each year, like Mia Walla or something like that, and then just having that be the gallery responsibility and kind of our tradition that we do and we continue. So. I mean, I'm yeah. definitely open to suggestions for other places to do it, but we just haven't been able to find a lot of other options. Okay, well, thank you. What's well, commission's pleasure? I, I very much appreciate their efforts, but I'm going to vote against it. I just um, I don't feel like this is the right place to, to start with something like that. Yeah, so my, my comment would be... Um, you know, if, if there was a group that would uh, maintain that and keep that up, and as long as the design was approved and it fit in with the nature of the downtown, that would be different. But, uh, you know, the more we take on that, uh, that ends up being our responsibility. It's, I mean, it's just an, another added, uh, not <clears throat> problem, but it's something that we have to handle yeah. down the road the more we keep adding on, so. So that would that would be my concern. I so at this point, we're time. It's time for a motion. So, shall I go ahead and make the motion, even though I'm against it? I'm happy to do that. You can. Okay, I move to authorize Eclectic Art Gallery to paint the traffic control box at Penn and Laurel, um, as long as they meet the following conditions. Shall I read them? Okay. Yeah. Any proposed, got in my glasses. <laughs> Any proposed artwork must be pre-approved by the city manager and Main Street. Ensure during or after the traffic control box is painted that the vents are not obstructed in any way. And work with Main Street to ensure the painted traffic control box is repainted or touched up as needed. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. All opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 Motion did not carry. Thank so, you. Appreciate yeah. the idea. Appreciate your effort. Next item on the agenda, consider bids for asphalt work. I'll introduce this and, and then uh, Mike's here to answer any questions. Uh, as you know, in the capital plan, we had budgeted $150,000 for some street work. And, uh, and also we joined with the county in getting bids for uh, uh, asphalt uh, put in place. And you see the bids there on the, uh, on the uh, RCA. Uh, the bids came in, we were hoping to do two streets, um, Maple Street and then uh, fifth, North Fifth Street from Oak all the way to the county line. Uh, both those streets need it. Uh, however, uh, the, when that was all taken into account, the cost came up to 196,000 plus. So uh, we feel it's important, though, to do those two streets, especially 
I mean, as you see, we have an option. One option is we only do Oak Street, a portion of Oak Street instead of the whole street. Um, but we think having the contractor there, uh, and we'd also like to get that area by the stadium paid for parking. Uh, and when you put all those together, it comes up to 196000 plus, which, again, we would take from the same source uh, that we are getting the 150000 <coughs> There's money there to do that, uh, uh, more, than, more than enough there to do that. So that's why we're recommending that. We think it's just more efficiently that we have, when we have a contractor there doing um, uh, North 5th Street that they do the whole street. Uh, and then, the, again, the other street is uh, Maple Street. So we're recommending option two there, which is $196,470.23. Yeah, I drove on Maple. Uh, this morning and from what I see on Maple there's a lot of base problems and just overlay we're not going to get the life that we need to actually do a, a removal stabilization and and then go back with asphalt uh, the road bed is so far gone and some of the dips that even trying to put a leveling course down your asphalt's going to be I don't know, maybe three inches, four inches thick in some spots where the base is actually rolled. Um, you know, I, I, I think if when we're looking at, at maple, we need to figure long term and do a removal and base replacement instead of just an overlay. I uh, could address that. Yeah. If you want to address that issue the base well yeah I, I can agree with that uh, some of that though when, from behind Toyota on west is just a chip and seal and we really need to do some of that because when we uh, annexed that in from the county that was just a gravel road with uh, chip and seal on it I think an overlay there would be fine but you know, I think you're talking farther back to the east well, there's and there's a few there. There's two or three. And, yeah. You know, there's a lot of bad spots mm -hmm. in it uh, that, you know, just to put, put good money over over bad base, it's uh, not the direction I think. I think we're, we need to, to look, and it is a problem. We need to put the money to do it right. We had just come or had some training in Topeka over the weekend, and they talked about road maintenance. And one of this is uh, where you don't have a base when you when you try to overlay that. You know, you're only going to get a couple of years right. life out of it. Yeah, there's there's nothing to, well. to set that on to. Yeah. So um, you know, if it needs more than that, then we probably ought to look at something that that will address that and be a, be a long term fix rather than just. Uh, putting money towards something that's just going to buy us a short period of time. But also in the training, didn't they say the cost was five times as much if you're going to replace the base too? Yes, yes. So we're not going to do it <clears throat> no. with current funds available. Well, so it's, no. or we either do it in portions yeah. that we can handle the cost or, you know, just to waste 125000 So if we if we did that in sections, what would we be, what would we uh, be looking at then? Or we'd need an engineer to. Okay. I think if we're going to go with base replacement, then we'd need engineering and. If you're going, to, if you're talking, that's talking testing. total reconstruction, and that's getting up to eight hundred to nine hundred thousand yeah, dollars, right. depending on the width of the street. Mm -hmm. Eight hundred to nine hundred thousand dollars per per mile. Uh, depending on the width of the street, and yeah. that gets very expensive. But did we have any performance spec that went out to bid on the contractor, or was it just based on the... Cause there's one way you can go in and, and mark the areas that are bad and have the contractor take those up, recompact the base, build it up, and then overlay. No, there was just a spec on the asphalt for yeah. overlay. There so, was no repair work basically involved in the bids yeah well we've 
Well, we've done, or I had some projects that we don't take the whole thing up, but you, you take the areas where it's obvious the base is gone, you cut that out. You, they you can cut it out and rotomel it, it, but it, and, it adds up and the build it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at least you're stabilizing that section of it. You're not doing the whole the whole street, but at least we're getting some lo more longevity out of it than just a, a a pure overlay. An overlay with the asphalt, you know, your your compaction where you've got varying in depth, and you're just rolling it. The deeper the asphalt, the less compaction you get. So, you know, that's my thought. At least if we can't afford to do the whole base, is at least the, the bases in the areas that are obviously in bad shape need to be repaired before we overlay. What about the North Sixth project or North Fifth project? No, that Fifth. Fifth. You know, that's that's a better candidate. Yeah, I don't see the the base problems. There's a few areas where holes, but that's mm -hmm. doesn't have the the rolling and the problem that Maple Street does. I think the North Fifth project, and particularly, you know, you're looking at at the the parking. Um, what what about we're just doing it at the stadium but is there a chance if we don't do West Main that we do more parking area West down Maple, towards Maine. Oak Street okay. West Maple we could look at it. West Maple no if we don't yeah excuse me <clears throat> if we Maple. don't do Maple Street then can we do more parking area on 5th Street yeah, we can bring it down, clear down to the pool if you want. Yeah. Because the problem when you have that transition from the pavement to gravel, <coughs> you have the erosion uh, during the rain, but also the That's traffic the going over mm -hmm. it just starts breaking off the asphalt. And then you have the problem of taking gravel back out on the pavement or in mm -hmm. towards the pool if we would go ahead and pave the parking down by the pool, it would give us better life on the edge and the on asphalt the paving right. there. And, and basically all the off street parking along uh, North Fifth would be paved in, right. in this project. Mm -hmm. So we'd get longer life out of our asphalt. <laughs> you know, I think the Fifth Street was really necessary I know that West Maple needs attention pretty badly, but it is uh, really in bad shape. It, it does, and I think that's what we need to fix the base. I'm not saying we don't need to do anything on West Maple. I think we do. I think, though, but we need a project that we're stabilizing the sections of bad base and then do an overlay. So, you know, if we can keep the the project for the next bidding of asphalt on West Main with base repair, or if we have funds even to look at a separate project. Is Trans Systems advising on any of no. Okay. You know, if we got an RF, RFP from some civils or, but, you know, I think we, we definitely need to look at, at Maple Street. Mm -hmm. Of course. So, so we'll move forward with North Fifth Street uh, and may look at extending the parking a little more and right. probably keep try to keep within that 150,000. Mm -hmm. See how far we can get with the parking. Yeah, that sounds that, good. That, yeah, I'm agreeable to that. That's widely used, and people that use the facilities there see the condition of the roadway and. The parking and it would definitely be a big improvement. And visually coming into the park on Fifth Street, mm -hmm. right? With, it's used a lot. with the street yeah. and in the parking all along there would really mm -hmm. really dress it up. Be a big improvement. So, do I have a motion? I'm gonna let you make it. 
It's going to be a little tricky. Mm. I make a motion that we um, authorize the North 5th Street from Street. Uh, let's see, we had, oh. let me get, we had a base bid of 64599 We had alternate one that extends from Wells Drive to the county maintenance. No, that, that 64000 was the entire street from Oak oh. Street to the county line. Right. So that's okay. the whole, the only thing we would be adding is the parking and extending that parking okay. amount number, alternate number two. Okay. Yeah, it looks like with alternate one, it's base bid. Right. Add. Okay, well, I make a motion that we authorize the overlay of North 5th from Oak Street to County Line, accepting alternate number two, parking along North 5th as designated in the drawing, and negotiating an additional change order to extend the paving of the parking from the south end of the designated paving project to Oak Street and remain in the $150,000 budget. I'll second. Got it, Mike? Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. I uh, have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is consider authorizing the purchase of two vehicles for Independence Police Department. You can see in the letter there that we have uh, $64,000 in the capital budget for vehicles for 2018 and $5,250 for in-car cameras. And um, if you look at the fleet there, you can see where the mileages are on the fleet. Once the patrol, I've noticed that once patrol cars starts approaching 70,000 miles, we really start to put money into them. It's been that way my whole career. I don't know why it works that way, but it just does, uh, probably because they they uh, get driven on city streets and get beaten up and they and uh, their tools and we take the best care that we can of them and we do uh, extensive maintenance on them and we document all that maintenance but they do wear out uh, rather quickly and so uh, we're proposing that um, well the first thing we're proposing is we actually still have one I think we have two rebuilders in the fleet uh, I wasn't aware that we still had rebuilders in the fleet. I, I don't understand how uh, a rebuilt patrol car was ever given to a police officer. Um, I just strongly, uh, I have no use for that. I don't think well, it's res I, I don't think it's responsible. But I we think uh, what was it? Maybe three or four years ago, we we started looking that in for the patrol cars getting new cars. We agree that right. You've got to have reliable vehicles. And, and I, I appreciate that. Um, but I was not aware that we still had them in the fleet. I thought we got rid of them mm -hmm. uh, the, in 2017, but we didn't. So we have one that's got 111,812 miles on it. It was put in as a uh, take-home car uh, before I arrived here. I'm unsure how many years it was a take-home car. Take-home cars... Um, Right now, the average age of our take-home cars is 10 and a quarter years with uh, 5,000 miles on them annually. So it's a good decision to take that out of the hands of the patrol officers, the people that are actually more often going to be in a dangerous situation, and put it into a uh, kind of a retirement area. Uh, but it's time to move that car along. The uh, captain was supposed to go to training this week. And she was trying to figure out which vehicle she was going to take. And I said, just take my truck. And she absolutely refused to, to let me drive her car because she's so worried that it, 
it was going to leave me <laughs> stranded just in town. So, um, well. so I respected that decision, and we were able to work it out. But we have found a, a 2015 Charger uh, Kansas Highway Patrol fleet sales. Uh, I don't believe in buying used vehicles. And in my career, though, when you buy a Highway Patrol car, uh, one of the best patrol cars I ever had was a used Highway Patrol car many years ago. And so those, I think those are a good bet. It's a totally different life that those have. Uh, I don't want to get into buying them and putting them in the patrol fleet. If we don't, that's kind of a, yeah. an extreme budgetary situation. I uh, prefer not to do that. But this one has 49,478 miles. It's got two years and 50,000 miles left on the manufacturer's powertrain warranty. Our fleet officer went up and inspected it. Uh, we got them down to 17,750 because of hail damage. It doesn't have a crash history uh, and uh, no collision history, and the mechanical condition appears to be in good shape. And the only cost, and it comes lit up and ready to go. So the only cost is to put our radios in it, which uh, we use a local vendor for that. And it's very economical. When you start talking about the whole car install, it's a very economical situation. So, Chief, how many take-home cars do you have in the fleet? Um, I want to say five. I think we have five. And they're all very old, except for mine, which uh, when I got here, I gave my patrol car, which was less than 10,000 miles on it, I gave it to the uh, uh, patrol division because uh, we put it out on the street because it we were in tough shape mm -hmm. and it was the right thing to do and it turned out we purchased my truck because it was cheaper to buy a new one because of the deals that you get from a manufacturer for a special service vehicle. Mm -hmm. It was more economical to buy my truck than it was to do anything else that year and uh, we couldn't even, the used one was uh, within like a hundred bucks of it so the cheapest one we could find so I just, it was a no brainer. But as I said, um, right now they're averaging 10 and a quarter years on them and 5,000 miles annually. Um, and we have a six-year plan. I didn't include it in this, but we do have a six-year plan. And in that six-year plan, we have accounted for those take-home vehicles as they start to cost a lot of money to keep them running. Um, we have one that has a rebuilt or a, a new motor put in it, I believe. Uh, about ten or fifteen thousand miles ago. So, uh, on occasion, they do cost money, but we don't want to get rid of that one because we just put a bunch of money into it. Uh, so this, to me, is a very economical way to go, and we planned the budget to do this last year. The patrol car that we're proposing is upfitted by a company in Wichita. Um, I've been really impressed. We have a local vendor, and they do a great job. But I was, we, last year we lucked into a deal. Uh, it was actually on a Sunday afternoon and got an email from an upfitter last year that we've got a demo vehicle. It's, I think it had less than 10 or 14,000 miles on it, if you guys remember. And it came with uh, $20,000 of add ons that, you know, we could have never afforded. So we did very well on that vehicle and they did a lot of free install for us. They, for free, pulled our stuff out of our patrol car and put it into theirs whenever we bought that off of them. Uh, we had some computer programming issues with it, and we called them on a Thursday, and uh, believe it or not, on a Friday morning, the president of the company, with one of his techs, drove down and fixed it, and they did that twice. And we've not had any trouble out of them other than when they had to troubleshoot that issue. So I've been tremendously impressed with their customer service. And they are now buying new, ve or they have worked out a deal where they get a new vehicle and upfit it for us. It's a turnkey deal. So when we get it, the only thing we're going to have to do is put stickers on it, and they'd probably do that for us if we ask them to. Um, if we go locally, we have a 12 to 16 week wait before we get the vehicle in, and then it would be however long it takes to get everything installed in it as well. Uh, they are also installing the radar and the in-car camera system for us. Um, and one, the car that we actually got, the demo vehicle that we actually got last year, our long-term plan is to turn that into the canine car because we are going to have to put a significant investment in it to equip it for the dog. So we want a car that's going to hold up for a number of years. So our 
Are you going to rotate the patrol vehicles to take home cars, or are you looking at driving the, the new patrol cars to life and then get rid of them and replace them? A mix of that. Uh, I don't want our detectives in a police car. I don't want our detectives in anything that looks like a police car. Um, that's one of the reasons I went with the vehicle I went with was so that I can hand it out when officers need to go on a on a project in, in which they don't want to be identified as a police officer. Um, so I certainly it really wouldn't be fitting in that philosophy to rotate a patrol car down to them. Right. But we do cascade, so we will be cascading this current one in the fleet down to the canine officer. And then uh, our school resource officer presently has a take-home car. Um, matter of fact, I think it's the only Crown Vic left in the state. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, he guards that car zealously, and he's... He, he kind of wept whenever we told him that was on the list for the next six years. And that's, well, you got to be practical, you know. Yeah. But anyways, um, he will be getting a, a – we will cascade a patrol car down to him as – and we have a plan to move them out of the fleet also, so we're not going to have 30 cars in the fleet. As we bring a car in, right. we're moving a car out. The only exception is uh, in the long-term plan, I'd like to get a training car, which will probably – I'm hoping we'll be able to duplicate this plan that the KHP has given us. I'm hoping we'll be able to do that again in the future when it comes time to do that. Um, and, you know, if we don't have that training car, it's pretty expensive uh, for the mileage that the officers get reimbursed for whenever they travel, particularly for Academy. I think it's $171 a week. So we're pretty good about putting them in one of our cars, but that car is getting very close to the end of its life, and it's also a rebuilder. But for practical reasons, we need to stretch the life of that vehicle a little bit longer. Yeah. So it looks like we've got three different needs for different types of vehicles all in one department and mm -hmm. a shuffling game. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, the my concern with not using a local vendor is us supporting our local businesses. Uh, I, I see some advantages to what you're, you're talking about with the upfitting and having them ready to go, but you know, you're, we're looking at close amount of money and uh, you know, supporting a, a local business that in, in times that uh, makes it difficult on a decision. What do you, commissioners, questions, comments? Well, I, I like the, the fact that I, under, I understand your point of view there. I like the fact that there was no timeline, no waiting as far as the 12 to 16 week process and the difference in dollar amounts was very minimal. And that, that's what I liked about that. But, uh, you know, where we can use local vendors where possible, we, you know, we need to, we need to do that. You know, we collect uh, taxes, you know, from people that, that provide services here in the community and uh, they need to have the opportunity to be able to, to work. Um, those are my two concerns about that. Well, we have been <laughs> faithful on the other, Mike, the other vehicles we've been buying. Is this the only time when we're dealing with specialty that we've had to look out of town yeah except for the fire ems stuff that's specialty yeah, yeah especially yeah no it, i mean everything else we've been looking locally and, and buying locally your Except truck last year your yeah your truck was local my truck was local the uh demo car that we got last year we just lucked into that buy and as i said it was from this sure. outfit in wichita Sure. I was doing the math. But it's a specialty car, I too. It is. Uh, yeah. I don't want anybody in TV land to think I was up here on my phone and disrespecting you. I was doing the math while we were talking <laughs> because it's a great point. It's a 3%. It looks like a, it's within the uh, – that's 3% of the upfitted vehicle's price, the price difference that you were talking about. Right. I don't know. I didn't have time to do the actual percentage right. change while you're talking, but, but – 
I'm sure it's going to be right around there anyways. It's, so it's, they're competitively priced. Um, we're not going to go wrong either way. We have a local vendor that's been upfitting vehicles for us for quite a while. And uh, I've seen patrol cars burnt to the ground, and I've never seen one burn to the ground here in Independence. Um, I've been running down the road and had my entire system shut down, including headlights, in my career in the middle of the night. And um, when you're trying to get somewhere and somebody needs you and you lose your headlights, that's even worse. Because then really, what do you do? Um, so I have all the faith in the world in our local vendor. So either way, we're going to be in good shape. Yeah, was it like, like Commissioner Isusi said, the, the, the main advantage mm -hmm. was that turnkey quick turnaround. Right. We wouldn't have to wait that 12 plus weeks. Uh, we'd have that opportunity cost uh, of getting it right away versus mm -hmm. waiting. But you can wait. As, as far as that 12 to 16 weeks, that's, that's not a problem for you? Um, it's, it's, it's not. It, it's more it's, of an inconvenience, maybe? It's or, certainly, or, you know, when you talk about the fleet maintenance, we've got one that's under warranty right now getting a tranny put in it. So it kind of is, but it's not something I'm going to kick and scream about. I mean, we've gotten through worse. I mean, for goodness sakes, we were driving rebuilders. So uh, we can tough through it if we have to. Again, it's, again, I, either way, we're going to be okay. If we, if we stay with the local vendor, then uh, we have someone in-house here that can address whatever problems we have with it. So that would be... We have Maintenance. someone local, not in-house. Or not in-house, I'm sorry. I have, a, someone local. I have a fleet maintenance officer, but not a... Some, someone local repair, that would be able right? to address the problems sure. rather than going Absolutely. back to where we made the purchase. That's correct. We got in a contract with this, so... That's correct. And that would, be a distinct, that would be a definite advantage to have the warranty work here versus having to deal with someone out of Wichita. That would be helpful. But the customers, you know, customer service from both places is fantastic. I like your your plan to keep uh, good quality vehicles for the patrolmen and to rotate look looking down the line that you're developing a good plan uh, the highway patrol car uh, for a for a take home I think that's a great idea I know the highway patrol does rotate them out they're mainly of course highway miles so you can you got any questions for Mr. Mayor? I'm okay with it either way. Okay. Uh, any more questions? No, none, none for me. <clears throat> Thank you, Chief. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Um, I think we're ready for a motion. Would anyone like to make a motion now? I move to authorize the police department to purchase the used 2015 Dodge Charger from the Kansas Highway Patrol fleet sales and a new 2017 Ford Police Interceptor SUV from TCF's Upfitting. Second. <clears throat> have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Excuse me. Um, uh, next item, item G. Consider an ordinance amending city code section 6-4 pertaining to the consumption of alcoholic beverages on public property. Um, Jeff. Now this is a cleanup ordinance. Uh, Kelly printed me off a history of alcohol ordinances and they, they, there used to be a prohibition of alcohol on, on any city, in any city building, I think in 1998. I'm looking at the first ordinance, it's 20 years ago. And they said, well, okay, we're gonna let it in Memorial Hall, the Shelter House, Lone Chief Cabin, the Forage Building. And it's, it's every, so often a, a situation comes up that's brought before the commission and it's expanded over time. The problem we came, we came across recently was uh, the company that updates the code that we put online had missed a couple ordinances. so. When we did our last update in 2015, we updated a 2010 ordinance, um, but the 2010 ordinance hadn't been put on the books, so that when we, we drafted the 2015 ordinance, 
it was really a draft of a, a predecessor ordinance dating back to 2005. So some things that we added in 2010 were inadvertently taken out in 2015 because the code had not been updated on the online version. And I don't know how you guys get your code, but I, I started out as city attorney mm -hmm. with the big black book, and I made Tony bring me every amendment. So I didn't want to miss out on one. He finally said, I'm not going to do it anymore. You just go online and get it. So <laughs> I'm at the mercy of what's online, as are the rest of city staff. So anyway, what you see in front of you is kind of a cleanup. It, uh, some of the additions were like for zoo brew. We, we never had allowed uh, alcohol in the zoo area before. Uh, it was added uh, as to pass muster with the city manager as to time, date, and location. And then if the city commission wanted to, the city could add additional policy considerations. Uh, there was a time when Oktoberfest by the Lutheran Church was held in the Oval. Mm -hmm. And around that time, the city did adopt uh, some policies. It's a city resolution from 2002, and it addresses security, uh, securing the area where alcohol is so it can't flow outside a certain area, uh, parking, insurance, things like that. That policy is still in effect. It's not an ordinance, but it's a policy. But it right now just applies to the uh, events where you pay to participate. The private uh, parties, like if you rent the shelter house or one of the rock cabin or Lone Chief or the 4-H building, uh, you can have alcohol. Hmm. And it's just been expanded. We, one time we, did, we realized that, well, all these properties that the housing authority manages, the funds that belong to it are titled to the city. So the city owns all those duplexes, the manor, the terrace, what have you. And alcohol is prohibited in all those. And I'm sure there's some people having a glass of wine with supper <laughs> at their house. So we stuck that amendment in there. Surely not. We didn't really make a big deal of it at the time. <laughs> but that was one of the things that got inadvertently dropped off because of that code update issue. So what you see in front of you here was an attempt to go back and pick up the things that got dropped off inadvertently and to add the zoo brew. And I think we added the miniature golf course as long as it's private function. Right. And I think we're the, that's the main changes, wasn't it, Kelly? Wasn't there a thing, though, for oh, the, the library? The, well, the library, and then wasn't there one so they could do, like, the beer gardens downtown and stuff? That's, that's right. I if they're that. specifically approved? Well, the library had been added one time, and then it got dropped off inadvertently. Uh, we were approached by Ad Astra to have a... Uh, beer garden during their fest festival so we added a new section would be section D and it says that if you're attending a function legally conducted which means you've got to go through whatever procedures the city would require uh, get city manager approval as the time date and location and subject to any other policies that the city commission might adopt We've never had a beer garden on sidewalks downtown. So if we adopt this ordinance, it would permit it, but it would also permit you to create a policy of conditions you think should apply. So the ordinance is just kind of an enabling document, and then the policy would be something you could just do by motion at any meeting. Say we'd like to say if Ad Astra's going to have a beer garden, we think they should have insurance and security and be roped off, and what, you know, whatever. Those considerations. So. Yeah, it, reading the portion about downtown, it, the, when you read it, it sounds like the whole downtown becomes a beer garden. <laughs> and uh, it, it doesn't it see specifics with requirements of a confined area or anything like that and I thought you know that, that's where I had a, a problem of of opening the whole downtown to a, a beer garden and then you know you, you look at it typically it's a controlled access it's confined within there but to have the whole downtown <coughs> then what about minors and children in the area and things like that that was that's my question and concern. It's not, you know, if you have 
a beer garden set up in a parking lot that's similar to at the Oval or Zoo Brew that is confined, that's one thing. But to have beer out on the streets, the whole downtown, that's that's a concern I have. I think they had a beer garden one year at Niwala in the AutoZone parking lot. They did. And yeah. it was private property, so yeah. there are rules that I'm not, I can't recite because I don't know them all. If Drew Demo were here, I would ask yeah. him and he could just rattle them off. But uh, there are rules that address some of your concerns. Mm -hmm. The underage thing, I think, is a rule that the state has some regulations in place. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the way this is worded, it allows the city manager as your first stop to have some say as to date, time, and location, mm -hmm. and that you can restrict the area. And then uh, the city can adopt policies. Uh, you know, if you want to say a beer garden should not exceed so many square feet and must be barricaded off and nobody under a certain age, I and mean, that would be the time to do that. Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd like to see it all done at one time so that... You know, if we're going to open that you can have a beer garden downtown, that we know the policies that are going along with that area and the restrictions, instead of opening the door to having it as, as broad as the ordinance lined out and then come back with policies later on. So well, what you might consider doing then is adopt the ordinance minus section D, because mm -hmm. D is exclusively the beer garden thing, because... There were some, like the city library was planning to have a function, and they got dropped off inadvertently. Uh, one of the sections, I think, uh, section B picks them back up. So I'd recommend if you drop D, but uh, A, B, C, and E, we'd just reprint it and renumber it, would accomplish what you're wanting to do. So it could be studied further. Is that, did I miss anything, Kelly? To, that would let us incorporate the, the policy out at the Oval. We could incorporate that yeah. standing policy and then build on to it as to um, how we wanted to address this. Correct. So this would clean up everything and just set it up that it could come back to look at opening up a beer garden later on with policies and ordinance mm -hmm. modification. We can amend it one yeah. more time and hopefully the code guys will keep up with us. Yeah. Okay. What? Any questions, comments from the commission? I have none. No further. I'll entertain a motion. You want me to give the motion? Sure. I make a motion that we adopt. Ordinance, does that have a number? 4270. 4270. Mm -hmm. Make a motion we adopt Ordinance 4270, um, Sections A, B, C, and E, with Section D deleted. I'll renumber uh, E so it becomes D. Yeah. <clears throat> and then renumbering. I'll second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is reports. Uh, 2016 audit compliance status report. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you have with you a hard copy of, of that report. Uh, it was not included in the packets. We wanted you to see it first. And so uh, I would just point out there are two parts to it. First, The first part is the status report. It's in a kind of a summary format. Uh, and it lists by uh, the item the audit. If you want to see what the full description of that is, you go in the, in the back. The second part has the full audit corrective action finding in the back. So. But uh, but the first part again is just a is just a summary item, and then and of course on the other uh, other part is the uh, uh, the status update, the items, the issues, and things we're doing to address each of those items. Uh, I will turn it over to Mike to go through it. If you have any questions, uh, again we tried to put it as easy to read as possible. A summary of of what we're doing. 
and uh, to, to address each of those items. But will the commission prefer to read and then come back with questions, or do you want Mike to go through it? I can he I can just hit on a few things and make a few comments, and then maybe that might be the proper thing to do. So you have well, you'd have time to absorb it. Because you'll know and, yeah, and you'll notice a lot of them are covered by similar things. Mm -hmm. there, there's there's a bunch of findings, but a lot of the findings are still covered by the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And that's what right. there, summarize there, that. There's a lot of it. It's, yeah. it's intertwined. Um, you know, so what we attempted to do here first and foremost was address all the findings and itemize the things that we felt like we needed to do that we absolutely knew that that need to be addressed. So we've identified those things. Some of those things are are not yet happening, um, like such as policy development. We're working on establishing that, looking through different policies that exist out in other communities. Um, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Also working with the auditors to help us structure language that that secures us up to prevent those findings from happening again. Some of the things have occurred either in part or in full, um, such as some of the things with the journal entries. Uh, there's a couple of notes about audit journal entries not being made timely, properly, or at all, or in the proper period. I can state that the 2016 audit journal entries, which we receive after the audit's complete, have been posted uh, per their instructions. So One of the things that the audit <clears throat> mentioned was in reviewing that there's actually a sign off not just a verbal that's that's correct so yeah and so correct. we we've been doing that in yeah. 2017 okay. uh, and you'll note in here that one of the things that we're that I'm going to be doing is going back through each and every journal entry for 2017 making sure we have in there what we need need to have in there uh, if there's not explanation in there of course you know, I didn't do all of them, but uh, I can probably figure out what occurred better this go around than I was able to this last year. Um, so, so you're, th you're talking about documentation of, of all your yeah, journal documentation, entries. documentation, making sure that I understand what's there to the best of my knowledge uh, to be able to explain some of those things. Okay. And, yeah, the, and then making sure that we have that approval that's on there as well. And the documentation will be kept in in a file in a binder and in, in what it, no it, it goes in with, in with the, the yeah so no not every single one of them needs a, a backup document just an explanation and detail why it is you have a lot of journal entries that are recurring on a month to month basis okay you should have the same ones each month some of it's just moving uh, such as our, our fund 26 which is the uh, general fund employees benefit fund so we pull money out of the general fund that goes into that general benefits fund, and then those benefits are paid out of that fund. So just that, for instance, is, is done on a monthly basis. But we're, we're going to go back through and review each and every one of them, make sure that we have all journal entries in there. Uh, there were some missing last year. So, so that, I mean, that's, that, that is a piece of it, and that was a big piece of the audit. So, you know, that, that's certainly a an easy place to target. Okay. Um, the software, mm -hmm. are you being able to use it now or well, is it too far? No, it, it so I think we, we talked about this some, uh, you know, it is, an old version, um, two or three versions behind where, where we're at today. Um, we are looking at upgrading that. I don't feel like, and I've been in touch with ENCODE already for two reasons. Number one, the purchase ordering system, and number two, the reconciliation piece of it. Um, upgrading that is, is not going to necessarily resolve that problem. Uh, I've requested some detailed information on both of those, um, both those pieces, the reconciliation of the purchase orders, so I can review them after I've had an opportunity to do that and kind of evaluate maybe where some of our hiccups are uh, and implementing that correctly. 
uh, I will get back with ENCODE and, and we'll have further conversations about, okay, this is, this is how we're structured, this is where we need to be, what do I need to do on my end of it to make it happen? One of the, the major reason really to upgrade the ENCODE is cybersecurity. Right. Uh, it, right now, it, we're, much, we're more vulnerable than we would be if we upgraded to the latest, which would significantly uh, improve our, our security in that regard, I'm told through our IT people. So that, that's probably the major reason, actually, to do it mm -hmm. uh, as well. It's like Mike says, we, we can do what we need to do with the current version. It's not user as user friendly. That's the other th advantage you would get. But that cybersecurity, which, which is a big issue nowadays, you read a lot about it. Governments mm -hmm. being attacked. You don't think governments mm -hmm. being attacked, but, but it's happening more and more, uh, all the time, mm -hmm. across the nation. So will will people be up to speed, on on ENCODE? I mean, was there an issue with people not being up to speed, or fully understanding? how the software function I mean there was there was a disconnect somewhere somewhere there could have been I mean the so. staff that we have now is trained on it the way that we're utilizing it so if changes are made which I fully intend on making those because it was something I identified <clears throat> I hadn't been here very long with the purchase order system and say yeah we have purchase orders but we don't really have purchase orders so we've got to get that in place I, I'm going to drive that 100 percent it's it's going to happen once we get to that point, we're going to change some things um, about segregation of duties with the department heads and the accounting staff, um, putting some safeguards in there so we've got proper authority to be making purchases. And during that time and that transition, once that's established, there will be training involved in making sure everybody's up to speed on how it needs to be handled going forward. Okay. So it's... <clears throat> A big task. It is a big task. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. you got to know where you're going, <clears throat> on how to get into the system and how to use the system that you just can't sit down and and start using <clears throat> without a lot of uh, background research and. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I mean, and we're going to lean on the encode. Uh, if I got to get them up here to sit down mm -hmm. and let's dig right through it, then that's we'll do what we need to do to make this system work to the okay. to the best we can. I know the purchase order piece of it can. There's still <coughs> some hiccup with the reconciliation, and and we talked about that. They looked back through the service tickets before they they saw the service ticket on it where it had been discussed. There wasn't enough information for them to to glean why we weren't able to to implement that. So. I'll continue on that that path as well because that that's the best means by which to do the reconciliation anyway. Okay. Yeah, sounds we're we're headed in the in the right direction. Absolutely. Yeah, and our goal, of course, is to have a, as clean a 27 audit as possible. So, uh, uh, but as Mike pointed out, there's some things that are there that just will be there. Uh, but uh, we're working to hope hopefully that 2017 will be nothing like 2016. Well, I think the, I don't know if you look at the, the good part of the 2016 mm -hmm. audit, it points out what well, needs to be addressed before we get to the 2017 audit publication and uh, you know, making sure that, that we don't see the same thing, and I think is our our goal that you know, like a, we talked today, that the problem with the audit is you're two years out. Yes, if you've that's got correct. a problem that you know we we go running into 2017, not knowing where we were, but then we were into operating in 2018 with maybe problems dragging in two years behind, and we really mm -hmm. have to hit it aggressively and um, the report uh, the first of each month will help keep people uh, keep a lot updated. of people are questioning keep us on where track. we are and, and keep it before us so we can get it resolved quicker any questions no, commissioner commissioner any more questions um, only one question i have all these have dates the so, dates are <laughs> You know, as I said, this is a list. These are things right. we've identified that right. we know we can add to it. 
um, from there. The, that date right there is, is not necessarily a completion date. Some of them maybe have already been completed. Okay. Some of them maybe will be completed by then, but I want each one of these items to be at least addressed in some fashion by that date that I can give you an update on the status of each one of those items. So the date in the middle is your target date to have that addressed yeah. by? Yeah, to, to address in it, maybe not totally level. complete, but start addressing it. I apologize that the, uh, I didn't notice until I, I actually put these together. When I went through and paginated the, the PDF file, it wiped out the headings. So there yeah. should be headings up there on the top yeah. of the page, but I okay. wiped them out. <laughs> okay. So they'll be in the PDF file, okay. which we'll put out. So then I, I guess the, it sounds like we're on the right track and we're moving in that direction. I just want to make sure that. Uh, that we're all fully that we're all fully trained the accounting staff you know the, the duties will be segregated we, they have a firm understanding of what they were supposed to do what they're not supposed to do that's right everybody is using this software and not circumventing the software by finding another path around it because that's, they don't either want to deal with it or they don't understand it or both that's correct because where the it software, does happen right where the software is being used it it is used for those functions and and the the, everybody that utilizes that system for whatever purposes that they do have been trained at it at the level that it's being utilized today. I'll say that. And as we continue to further utilize that system and improve those processes and those procedures, additional training will be done to make sure that that's in place as well. Okay. Okay. So our next report on this will be? I think we're going to give you another update. We'll give you another one because we want to do it the first meeting of mm -hmm. every month. So uh, May, the next meeting in May, we'll, we'll do it again. Okay. May not see okay. a lot of changes, but there'll be some. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if there's anything else. Two weeks oh, there probably is, but I need, I need to probably go through this. Yeah, I think. If we have questions that we go through, we can email, but then we might highlight any questions at the May 10th after we've read, read yeah. those. So. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. If, thank you. It always helps to have it in writing to digest and formulate more questions. <laughs> yeah. It does. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is commission comments. Um, Commissioner Hogshead. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to bring up the City Hall project just for a moment. I know it's not on the agenda, but, um, you know, we've gotten one proposal to write some specifications for the first few steps of that project. And, and I got to say, I was a little surprised by the cost. Mm -hmm. I have um, purchased three buildings downtown and had to put new roofs on all of them. And on all of them, I, I had to tear it all the way off, all the way back down to the structure and start again, and went with a very good quality roof. And I did three buildings for $90,000. And um, so that fee just seems exorbitant to me the more I think about it, the one fee we've gotten for that. So I'm wondering if it wouldn't be prudent to get another proposal rather than wait till we have um, have that gentleman back to our meeting. Because um, I mean, I, I can already tell you my reaction is going to be, well, I, I thought the guy did a great job with facilitating the meeting, but to have an out-of-town architect come in and charge us that kind of money to help us with a, a new roof and new windows and some waterproofing, um, I mean, you're an architect. Mm -hmm. that, I, that just seems like a lot of money to me. It, it feels like we're going to want another second, at least a second proposal, so I'm not sure why we shouldn't go ahead and get a second proposal. But that's, uh, Craig and I were talking about that when we first saw the the cost that was Craig brought that up too and looking at the way it's broke down the first section was a little over twenty thousand dollars to study to tell what we needed to do when right we really know yeah we're telling them we what we want them to do right and and that's what we we visited again today about you know, we've got the, the cost projections and some of our estimates on the building for those items. So with that, we can look at if uh, usually on 
remodeling projects, the state allows a 10.5% architect fee. So we can come backwards to see about where that fee is, but you know, really, you're right, it's pretty simple. A roof, you know, it's yeah. picking your membrane system. Right. Do you put insulation on top of the deck so you make your building envelope all inside conditioned, or do you uh, do a different insulation on the bottom of the deck? Windows are pretty cut and dry. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you've got the rough bucks you're gonna use to set your windows in. The windows will be sized to opening, so, yeah, ninety-one thousand for what we're looking at. Yeah, seems seems a little high to me. Yeah, and like I like I said, he he seemed like a clear choice when we were choosing a facilitator, mm -hmm. and I thought he did an excellent job. Mm -hmm. But um, well, that's that's a lot it's, of money to help yeah. us with these three projects, as yeah. I see it. It's think, almost like we're we're being um, charged again for services he's already provided. I felt that way too. And I thought it was excessive and. My question is, because I'm not an architect and I don't have the experience that you have at the other end of the table, is that if, if we were in the building and it needed roof repairs, what would be our process? What would be our process getting a new roof on a building, a building we occupied? What would the process we would go through and do it? Well, why, why would this be different? Because it's not <coughs> occupied now. A lot of... And I know there's there's other things that play into that, but that, I mean that's why I'm asking. With the roofing, the manufacturers have standard details for flashing and termination of the membrane. Right. So selecting the type of membrane system you want to use brings a lot of other. A lot of it's already determined, yeah, basically. And then looking at the parapet wall, whether you can terminate the flashing the membrane eight inches up above the deck or. Depends on the wall whether you put a new cap, a metal cap over the wall. It's all pretty, pretty standard, and yeah, it is a lot of money. And um, the windows, uh, again, it's pretty much standard. The manufacturer, like you didn't have any drawings to put your windows in your building on no, Main Street. No, Woods got me some custom-made wood windows that fit the openings like a glove, and yeah. I mean I. Sorry to say, I didn't use an architect for that. I just got these <laughs> from my local <laughs> dealer and had them no, put in. No, well, the, you know, that's simple. If you're going to put a window in, the manufacturer has the standard details right. to do that, and yeah. you can do it if you select the window or the performance spec. Could, it always goes out that before they're ordered, the contractor has to verify all the openings because sure. he's going to be responsible right if one doesn't fit. And the the waterproofing of the basement, and that was done when the elevator was put in. There's perimeter drain, but we we'll need to verify somebody need, you know, with the, the vac truck, you could do some excavation to look at the, the membrane where it's leaking. Is it spot repairs or is it all have to be redone. That, but uh, I think there's. You're right. We need to look at the, the cost. I think we can. Uh, Craig and I had, had visited today about getting together, the first of next week and kind of looking at the specific items to define it. Because that was the thing when Craig sat down and called. He said. Well, this is way, way too much. Had no idea it was going to come in that high. And oh, he was suggesting just doing uh, like phase one. And as I was, you know, like you, it's it's too simple. We're putting a roof on. We're putting windows in. And we have had, uh, or I've had conversations with Andy about that this issue, and he's certainly willing to talk and. Uh, look at reducing that that scope and because I he agreed he said yeah you know you need a roof I don't you know so he agreed with the concept what we're talking about here so we could certainly uh, and that's what we were planning to do before our May 10th was to have that discussion with him uh, before he came here on May 10th now we can still do that or he can take that next course as well let's just step back and do an RFP and like let's just, just put it out there
I think you should just volunteer your time to be our architect for the project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not that, you know, like I say, if you write the spec, it's not that. <clears throat> So donate it to the city. The there you go. So right, roof, right? so right now, I mean, uh, Mr. Pitts is planning on coming down mm -hmm. on May 10th to talk about that scope of work, which we'll, we will have a conversation with and adjust based on what we've talked about. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to wait for that and, to, and see how it goes. or um, I just hate to delay it any longer. It feels, right. it feels like we've waited long enough to get this going. Putting on an RFP is going to take another, I mean, Getting it together in the first place, and with the, you, know, you know, drafting an RFP, but then getting it out probably three to four weeks return time. I would well, guess maybe not that complicated. Do you want to visit next week, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, and then you could uh, update on what we discussed oh, to meet, commissioners meet next week with and well, you and I talk, and, and then right. Let Gary and Lewis. Yeah. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you. Okay. You know, I, I agree with Gary. It's this is kind of drugged out <laughs> for for quite a while, and we I would sure like to see us moving forward on it. Uh, you know, we already have uh, eight hundred and ninety thousand dollars earmarked mm -hmm. uh, for it, so it's not like we don't have some money to start. Mm -hmm. um, making repairs and start addressing some of the issues with the building so uh yeah i'd like to see it move uh, forward expedited mm -hmm. so we can move forward on it okay anything else um just have to say i'm very excited about love independence day this yeah. weekend got so many things going on it's very very exciting it's really growing yeah amazing yeah i uh would like to thank the staff for for letting me um uh, information on the energy audit that we got from West Star Energy and I talked to Carrie and she was booked up for a couple of weeks I wouldn't be able to get up be able to sit down and talk to her till the week of May the 7th I believe that's a Monday uh, so I appreciate the information and I've, I've given it uh, uh, I haven't looked at it thoroughly but uh, I, I do have the information I appreciate it and some of these things I've already asked Craig but um, for the public to know, I had asked about where we were at with uh, the access management uh, process with K KDOT mm -hmm. and about the signed contract and if, if he Jeff would could, like to Jeff any could comment Jeff on that asked. about where we're at on that and what we're waiting on. <clears throat> well, I don't think we're going to get KDOT to, to change much. They sent us a definition in February. I circulated it to, if you remember, you weren't on commission yet, but a bunch of business leaders came, and the West Main Corridor was where most of them came from. Right. Because there are a lot of curb cuts and access drives, shared drives, and what have you, that if there's a change in use of the property, then you got to go back to KDOT and ask permission to continue to use it, and they could say no, find an alternative means. And that, we went through that once, and they, we convinced them to leave us alone, and they did. <laughs> Uh, that may not happen in the future, but so these business leaders are concerned about how do you define change of use? Like if there's a retail outlet and it closes down and six months later it opens up, but it's still a retail outlet, is that a change in use? And they sent us a definition now that ties it not just to that, but to an increase in traffic. It has to be a, if there's a 10% increase in traffic or projected increase, then you have to go through the application process to see if you can get your curb cut. And we sent that out, and I, we got input back from some of the business leaders, and we sent that up to Topeka, and we, we've been going back and forth with them. And, and there have been times when it just got stagnant. The, the lady up in Topeka's name is Nelda Buckley, and uh, Craig asked me to contact her earlier this week, and I did. And, uh, she didn't offer me any encouragement that they would do anything more than they already have. And then uh, the city received an email from Sean Turner, uh, the engineer with Trans Systems, of course, and uh, he reminded or pointed, pointed out to the city that there's a June 1 deadline coming up for some type of applications for projects. 
from KDOT for money and stuff like that, and that if independents didn't sign to access management, they probably wouldn't <coughs> qualify for those. Not that we would get them anyway, because the KDOT doesn't have any money. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Um, anyway, so you have that working, and, and, and there's a need to get it done. Um, KDOT, under access management, this is a statewide program, right. and the language we're looking at is pretty much boilerplate and applies to every city and state. And they're very reluctant to make an exception to one of however many cities are in the state, a thousand cities, for fear that everybody want an exception. Um, I think they're willing to work with us. The commission, the, we're not really against KDOT and, and being two star. We were just trying to support our local businesses, and that's all the commission was doing when we had these discussions. So that's where we are. I mean, we could very, we could say to KDOT, you know, print us up the version you want us to sign with this definition in there that you sent us in February. We'll present it to the city commission, and maybe they'll sign it. And we, like we talked about sticking it on the May 10th agenda. I, mean, I, I think I sat in on that June 2017 uh, meeting, and I think it all revolved around their definition of change of use and what we consider change of use. So it, it appears like we still haven't come to a consensus on what change of use is, their definition. And I can understand the reluctance to make exceptions. It applies everywhere throughout the state, uh, with the exception of here. And it just opens another door um, that they have to contend with. So yeah. I guess my, my other question is, um, I, I think, do they not give you the, the chance and the opportunity to voice your opinions to where you can have them trained? If you can make a, a, a oral argument that uh, you talk about waivers uh, about yes about K dot uh, they look at every situation uh, individually yeah you could ask you, for a waiver and you could you could come back and say so it's not like they're going to be heavy-handed and say it's my way or the highway but they did give you a chance to mm -hmm. uh, appeal that so you would have recourse and I guess that's what I'm well, you're you're at their mercy. I mean, well, I, I, you, you I make application that. for a waiver, yeah. and it's, it's still going to be discretionary with yeah. them. You yeah. can ask, but I mean, they'll give you what you want. Yeah, it's, it's, it says we've been asking for something different. Yeah, because it, it is their, it is their. We haven't got a formal waiver process. I guess there's a formal process for yeah. a waiver, but we haven't done that. But we've been talking. And it's with, pretty bureaucratic, to be honest, because the, the document that wants to sign re then refers to some underlying policy documents. Those refer to yet other documents, none of which I've ever seen in my lifetime. Now, Sean Turner deals with the dailies, very familiar with them, and sent us an email with a, a link to what he thought. And actually, he, he, he gave his opinion that he thought it was about as best, best work I get. So, so how, how much potential money are we looking at missing out if by not? No, yeah. It, well, right, they don't have any funding, but... It depends on a project that we would kind of like. Mm -hmm. uh, they call them CLIP now. It used to be CLINK, and now it's mm -hmm. CLIP. CLIP. But depending on what project we could identify on 75 specifically. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to put in a request for a project by, before June 1 and be considered for it. We definitely probably want to get some resolution on the access yeah. management. Yeah, there's different, there's different funds. The access management fund um, last year they were having trouble getting people to apply and it had two million dollars late in the year with it it it's used to expedite traffic through the town on on the corridor that's been identified which is highway 75 but when if I remember, the uh, access management plan was actually prepared by a consultant that the city hired. It wasn't KDOT coming in identifying, but it was our consultant that that identified the closures, and that's what they're just saying, just abide by your plan. Um, but it also identifies the alleys um, along the 
the access management corridor because it's intended to try and move traffic off of the highway, which would open up some grants um, on the alleys of Parallel, which North uh, Penn Avenue, uh, we've got some really bad alleys there that could possibly come under some grant applications. Uh, of course, without the agreement signed, we're not eligible for any of that money. The, the other programs, the CLIP and, and like they've all changed from the clink and the geometric, they're all under the CLIP now. That's probably discretionary whether our not signing the access management plan will hinder award of, of those funds. Now we did get the economic development grant for Peter Pan Road, but uh, when Dairy Queen was looking at doing their addition, I had to work with the engineers at KDOT because of access on 75, and um, I didn't find that they were being unreasonable. There was one issue of changing the exit from the drive-through. They wanted it at an angle because the building uh, sits so close to the, the road that your visibility is hindered. But through discussion and as if you, I explained if you go at an angle exiting to the south, now you have to look over your shoulder and that would increase the, the hazard more. And they, they agreed and didn't require that change. So it just depends, you never know what the discussion would be. but. So if you the, want to add it to your May 10th agenda, I'd recommend you invite those business people back because they're going to want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Might as well get it over with. Yeah. And, and if you're going to make yeah. a hard decision, just get it all mm. out, out in the open. So my other question would be, so the other communities that have signed on to this agreement, then evidently they work through the issue of that change of use term and it was acceptable to them and agreeable to them to, to sign on for the program. So I don't know how many communities have a West Main. There are a lot of entrances on West Main. That's yeah. where the main problems were. But, but there, are, there are other communities that are <clears throat> drawing resources from this plan. Oh. So they had, to, they had to sign off to comply with, with what, uh, what the, the terms of that. So I'm, I'm just... Uh, I guess my question is, and actually, when the, I think, what did, when you know, they, what did they find agreeable, or they were able to come to consensus? I think that was no longer an issue for them in in those particular communities that have signed off on this. I guess. Well, I, it was just a kind of a fluke that the change of use became an issue with us, just because that one business. Had that not occurred, we probably okay. would have signed it by now. But that just magnified the okay. problem. Yeah, it would be good to put it to, to rest, either sign it or or not sign it, make a decision. So if we could put it on the May 10th agenda, and then we can, if you get the, the agreement to us to look at ahead of time, then we can get back with you on questions. I have one question on a comment you made on the CLIP program. You said that, that um, this access management fund that we're looking at, that they mean that may not play into such a big part, being that they've changed from the Clink program to this. Is yeah, that the what access I, management? It's a different program different. Than, than this. Yeah. So. But it, and it's administered by different uh, department heads too. Right. So, it's hard to say. But the big factor, if they don't have money in the program. Yeah, you're not going to get any money yeah. anyway. So, okay. Um, I had a <clears throat> question uh, in January we talked about um, the increasing the size of the commission from three to five, and uh, you were going to look for some information. Jeff, did you ever get a chance to? I think you just make a motion and adopt. I think it has to go to public vote. Yeah. And you probably have to adopt an ordinance to get it to a public vote. Okay. 
And then the, the timing of it would become an issue. Do you want to have a special election for that only, or do you want to tie it into an election that's already coming up? Right. So elections are expensive. Okay. Um, on the, the fire truck, did we ever get an update on the... Um, Sean has done a great deal of research, and I'm putting it all together in a kind of report that I'll give to you. Okay. Um, okay. He, yeah, he's done a lot of research, contacting a lot of people in Tulsa, looking at um, all of that, and it's it's pretty much drafted. I'll okay. get that to you ASAP. And then, I guess the big question: How much money? Do we have available for purchase of a truck at this time? Uh, I can better answer that. I mean, I mean, we were looking to obviously to buy it to, to lease purchase, you know, so it wasn't mm -hmm. taking a lot of cash. It was going to, but we would have had to come up with in, not until 2019, right, uh, to make that first payment. Yeah, what, what we've done. I mean, number one, we're working on capital right now for the 2019 budget. So, well, I, yeah, simpler, I, if if this was available and it was a good truck, do we have the money to even consider it? Um, you know, as, as we had it set up it, previously, it was yeah. at least purchase. Uh, I, I could look around and see what we would have available without pension. Yeah. pension I, I guess that's the first thing. If we don't have the money okay. available, <clears throat> then that right. stops it all. <laughs> yeah. You know, if we it's got money. if we got a hundred thousand. To 125,000, that we could say, okay, yeah, the truck is good; it's not problems; it it work for us, and we got the money. Let's. But if we don't have any money, then I mean, why go buy the candy store if you can't buy? You know. Can look, but you can't buy. <coughs> no good. And I don't like smelling candy if I can't taste. Can okay, that's all <laughs> that I had. If, let us know on that. Sure, I'll look at that. Public. I, oh, I still have one more. Oh, one more. Uh, uh, I had asked about um, a truck route for the grain trucks. All those going to Beechner is that still being studied? Yes. <clears throat> as far as a, a route yeah, device for them. Yeah, they were. I don't know if Jerry has any. If you have any on update that, on that, we're still in the it. process of looking at it, or where we're at on that. That's a very complicated and extensive update for you on that. Um, and I'll bring PowerPoint. it to you at the next meeting with pictures. So it's, uh, I need to, I have a proposal from the Traffic Safety Committee, and we involve stakeholders from the community that are affected directly by it. Right. So we will bring that to the commission uh, the next meeting. Do you remember, uh, it's been a couple of years ago that Sean approached us that there was some program that could do a traffic count? We were looking, somebody brought up some traffic on one street, and we had visited generally about that. I'm oh, sorry, I don't remember that. Yeah. Sounds good, though. Yeah, it was free, too, I think. My favorite price. Yeah. Wasn't okay. around the schools? I Did couldn't remember. You know, I don't remember. That's what. Had something to do with that. I thought it was school thing. downtown that somebody was talking about uh, eliminating a stoplight or. Oh, uh, that one. Do you remember? Yeah, they talked about it on, over by Jefferson too. But yeah, I think I know. Did we ever get? About. Did we ever get results on? I'll have to check with him. Okay. That's been quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get back to you on that, as Jerry said. It's all like right. we've got a plan. All right, Jerry. Thanks. I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. You're, You're welcome. Got a good PowerPoint. Uh, outstanding. It's, it's only 57 slides. And bring <laughs> cookies and some iced tea. Yeah. No, no cookies. A chocolate Popcorn. chip. Popcorn. I worked really hard on the 57 slides. I didn't have time to get any cookies. Yeah. I, I did want to make a comment that the people that live in the vicinity of that beach or grain that uh, since they've been using that dust control when they're uh, loading uh, that's, helped, that's, that's helped tremendous I'm not heard any more complaints okay. about that 
and the people uh, see as long as they do that right they're uh, for the time being they're happy but there were I guess there have been times in the past where they hadn't and that just yeah, right floats everywhere and yeah, yeah and well, heard, I've been out there a couple of times and they, yeah. they've been complying so good so they wanted me to pass that on the neighborhood so great okay no other questions no um, Mike did you get any forms turned no, out okay not. so no public concerns will ready for executive session um, I move that we recess for an executive session for consultation with the city attorney regarding an ongoing legal issue pursuant to the attorney-client privilege exception KSA 75-4319-B2. Um, we'll come back in session at 7.45. And in the session will be the city attorney, city manager, and the commission. So do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. <coughs> I'll call the meeting back in session. We have uh, no action to be taken from executive session. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, bye-bye. Aye. Aye. I guess we really don't have to yeah. do a vote. Apparently not. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I forgot. There's no further action. We can just adjourn Thanks. according to those folks.